everyone, and welcome to a very special Retail Innovation Conference conversation. The event is very soon, and we're thrilled to have joining us today, Franz Johansson, our keynote speaker. Franz, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So you are the CEO of the Medici Group, an author, keynote speaker, obviously, and all-around expert on innovation. We'll get into the innovation stuff in a little bit, but for those who don't know you, why don't you give us a quick, um, you know, Cliff's notes of your career, how you got to where you are today. Well, um, so I, I, I grew up in Sweden. I grew up in Sweden, uh, quite different from most Swedes during the time. Um, my, my mother's American, she's black and Cherokee, my dad is Swedish. And that gave me, I think, an outlook on the value of diversity in life. And that has played throughout my entire career. I, uh, I had um, a started a company after college in, in the healthcare business. I started one after business school in the, uh, in the software business. And sort of all of these, bring all of these things together, different cultures, different fields, industries, got me to write the book, The Medici Effect. And that book really says that diversity drives innovation. When you bring together different perspectives, you have a better shot of breaking new ground. And that kicked off a whole other career for me. I spoke all over the world and I started the Medici Group. Uh, a couple of years after that. And uh, today, um, as of last year, we launched a, uh, a platform, you know, uh, which is a whole separate product, which is going, going like about 30% a month now. It's really exciting. Wow, fantastic. So quick question. It seems like the completion of your first book, The Medici Effect, kind of sparked or inspired you to start the firm, if I'm getting that right. So yeah. what kind of unfinished business or what new needs did you see kind of come out of the experience of writing the book, maybe talking to business leaders about the book? I mean, did you notice that there was a really big gap between, you know, understanding of diversity and innovation and actually applying some of the practices that you were talking about? Oh. Like, what was the inspiration there? Oh, my God. I mean, so uh, the book came out the book has ended up being an evergreen book. Uh, it is it's sort of a persistent perennial bestseller for the publisher, HBS Press. Uh, but it came out in 2004. In 2004, the world was a, a different place. I mean, the, any, if there was a discussion around diversity and inclusion, it was really about very much sort of, um, uh, yeah, it was about the right thing to do, maybe, but it was still early. But actually, back then, it was called diversity and tolerance, which if you think about it is a horrible term. Like we tolerate you. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, uh, but what I contributed to and what actually I think the book really contributed to in, in when it came to innovation and when it came to diversity was it emerged these two fields. And all of a sudden it made um, companies aware that um, I have another way of innovating. I have another way of creating new ideas, which comes from the diversity of, of our teams. It comes to those teams being inclusive. And, and, um, and I think I say the first couple of companies that really started taking this to heart was um, brands like Nike and, and Disney. I've been at Disney for over 12 years now. They, you can see it play out in how they think about their branding, how they think about their, their, their shoes, uh, or, or, or in this case, how to think about the movies, how to think about the TV shows. It, they have a deeper understanding of, of, the, of the value of that. So I would say that um, every year, there's greater and greater understanding from businesses. But what's happened recently is that the need to understand it has skyrocketed. Uh, the need to innovate has never been greater. I mean, never been greater, particularly those that are, are listening in on this. In retail, you're seeing it, it's coming like an avalanche. Uh, so you need ways of thinking about innovation. And so today, this journey basically has gotten to the point where um, everybody is, is looking to innovate and they understand that diversity and inclusion could be an untapped pathway there. Yeah, some fantastic points. So to drill a little bit deeper, I mean, Full disclosure, I think part of the reason why we were so thrilled and inspired to reach out to you, possibly have you speak for our event, is that your book so perfectly encapsulated like what was happening now, which yeah. to your point, something in 2004 ended up being pretty evergreen, give, given everything that's happening between the pandemic, everything that's happening with Black Lives Matter. Um, and I think 
all businesses, not, not just retailers, even though that's our, that's our target audience right now, um, is trying to figure out where where do we place our stake in this game? How do we approach yes. this? Yes. Um, I guess my first question for you, are you feeling that sense of deja vu right now in terms of the conversations you're having? And, you know, <laughs> what new things are, are coming to a head, especially for, for retail? I know you talked about Nike in your last response. Yeah, you know, so um, uh, it's not exactly deja vu because what is what is really going on is that there is a much more advanced understanding for the need of this than has ever been before. Um, I would say that um, uh, at best, when companies try to figure out how to, how to track this uh, in the past, it would sort of seem like it could be solved maybe with some programs, maybe a little bit of extra recruiting things, et cetera. But here's the thing what happens. Like, Imagine that you're a, you're a, you're a leader or manager in, in, in an entity and, and, and on the one hand, you're asked to sort of optimize against performance. We need to, we need to innovate, we need to move fast, we need to come up with different ways of doing things, we need to perform, make money, grow sales. Okay, that's this path. Then at the same time, I'm asking you to optimize against DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. We need to address this, we need to address this. That's actually a huge challenge, right? You're, I have to do this and that, and they're both extremely important. Most leaders actually would struggle to optimize against just performance. I mean, if all I needed to focus on is performance, I would still struggle. So what, what we've done and where the conversation is heading and where we basically have had over a decade of experiences that's now coming to play out is that we've come to understand how does DEI help you optimize performance? In other words, now as a leader, you only really have to focus on one thing, which is performance. But you begin to understand in a granular way, how can these concepts help me outperform? How does it help me think about products differently, about our business model differently, about how we engage with our customers, about our transition from, from a digital to hybrid or from physical to hybrid. It's going to be hybrid, hybrid, hybrid. Everything is hybrid. Uh, and that's where we, that's ultimately what's going to be, be, be going as we, as we get out of, of, of COVID as well. How, how do I think about talent? How do I think about our partnerships? Uh, all of those things are, are, are being up in the air. And, and once one understands that with diverse and inclusive teams, you have a much better start of making that happen. Um, now you're now you can focus again on performance. You can focus on solving those things, and that's basically what we've done. That's the that's the platform that we built. It's really designed to help teams solve those problems using a completely new tool or vehicle, which is DNI. Yeah, that's fascinating. And I, I guess it kind of speaks to the reality that, you know, it's not just about having people who look different than you on your team. It's the difference in experience, in mindset, in skills. And I think those conversations are being had more like people are starting to kind of wrap their heads around what what diversity inclusion really means. Yeah. Um, so, so do you think that what's been holding up progress for so long is that it seemed like such a one dimensional thing that was also <clears throat> very complex at the same time? I mean, I'd love to hear your take on, you know, what has, I guess what has uh, stalled progress in a way, like as far as making teams more inclusive? Right. So um, first, we define diversity along four dimensions. Um, the first one is who you are. So that's race, gender, age, sexual orientation and identity and so on. It is what you do as your job, your function, your industry and so on. It is how you do it. That's uh, so are you extroverted, are you introverted? And then it's with whom you're doing it. Those are the networks that you built inside of your organization, in your, in your industry, in your community. Now, this last one is often not talked a lot about, and it tends to track the first two, right? Your, your industry, for instance, or your, or your background. But it's, not, but, it's not the, but it's not the exact same thing. And the last one is sort of critical to understand how you execute ideas. Why are diverse teams better at executing ideas? Um, and it comes down to this last way of thinking about diversity. So that's the way we think about diversity. And I think it's extremely important to understand that, that, that these multiple dimensions matter. And as it turns out, 
that the more of those you can hit, the better off you are. So you might want to say, well, you know what? I want to pick one of them. I'm going to pick industry, and I want to kind of do that. That's what you're, what you're actually looking for is a multidimensional idea of diversity on your team. Now, why is it taking so long, though? What is it that is what is it that is has happened that is um, why, why aren't we talking about it more until now? And and the, and here's the reason. There are two trends that are you can discern globally, and they've been going on for years. The first one is the rising interest and need around innovation everywhere. But the second one is the rising interest and need to evolve diversity and inclusion. That's also global. In the US, it, it is leading on it. We've seen same discussions in, in, uh, in Europe, uh, starting up in, in Asia, and it's coming in Latin America and Africa as well. So these two are really tracking. It's not, a, it's not a coincidence that both of these are rising at the same time. Because what they reflect is the increase in connections between people that are different. Those connections are driving innovation, and it's driving the need to understand this piece as well. But it's coming to a head. It's happening faster than ever right now. So what does that, what, what are the implications? The implication is that if you're, an, if, you're, if you're having an organization, if you have a company, you're going to actually have to address both of them. And it's never been more necessary than now. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, people talked about innovation as well, but not in the same way they're talking about it now. People did talk about diversity and inclusion as well, but not in the same way they're talking about it now. We got to this point where these two trends have converged, they merged into one. And that is what's driving the need for it. Um, and we're about to see that trend, that trend line is only about to accelerate. And I'll add one more thing around that, which I think is huge for everybody that's listening to this. Because it's about to accelerate, one has to understand something about where one is, as a, as from one's own perspective, your own organization. Because what's going to happen is that if you are somebody that is maybe coming from a different background, what team, what organization are you more likely to join? And you're more likely to join the one that already has diversity. So what's actually happening right now, this is already sort of an, a race happening between organizations. Those that have that diversity will have an easier time attracting more of it. And those that don't will have a harder time. And that's where you're starting to see the shift in talent. It's already happening, and that's going to keep on accelerating. Oh, that's excellent. And I feel us slowly getting into the rabbit hole of, of your session at, at RAC. So, I mean, what else can folks expect as far as, you know, talk track, um, takeaways? Because you're talking about this intersection, how the time is now to really address this head yeah. on. Are we going to be digging into the how of it all? Because I'm sure people are like, all right, I know I need to do this, but where do I even start with this? Yeah, I mean, what, I what can people expect? I'm really looking forward to this session because um, first, what I, first what I want to articulate is actually what the challenges around innovations are. And, um, and so it's a bit even of a provocative segment. I'm, I'm kind of taking a sledgehammer to the idea of expertise and logic. Um, and so, you know, we all fashion ourselves one way or another as experts in something. But because of the, because of the, the speed at which the world is evolving, so the shelf life of expertise is, is, is shrinking. So I'm going to talk about that. And that sets us up for why innovation is challenging. So then the question is, how do you resolve this? How do you solve for this challenge? And so for the next, the next part of that talk, I'm going to go through very specific things that you can do. What does it mean to reframe the opportunities? What does it mean to seek out intersections? How do you think about bringing together the diverse teams? How do you make those teams uh, inclusive? And... What do I mean when I say that speed is the new IP? I like to think of IP as IP, but what I'm saying is speed is the new IP. When you're thinking about what your edge is, it's going to be your, your ability to move quickly, to test quickly, to launch quickly, and to pivot and to change. Um, so that's what the talk is going to cover. It's going to be uh, a lot of takeaways. 
but also a lot, I think, very vivid examples uh, for how this is playing out right now in the world. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I think those examples especially are so needed because being able to model or, or adapt the process that another company has gone through, it makes it a bit more, not just tangible, but I guess achievable, um, especially with yeah. a topic a- as big as this. So definitely looking forward to it. And it's more fun. I mean, like, yeah. you know, you're going to pick examples that are exciting. So, so I think those are, those are stories that, uh, that can, you know, can sit in our mind. How do, we, how do we think about this? And how does that relate to the isotel? Or how do we think about that? And how does that relate to, uh, to a bikini, et cetera? Like th- that, if, we can, if we can craft a narrative around those things, uh, we remember better. Yeah, absolutely. So to close out our time together, friends, I know you're a very busy man. So thank you for taking the time. Um, I do want to know the intersection of, you know, your keynote and our overarching theme for this year's event, which is the big acceleration. And I think you've kind of made subtle hints at this concept. And I think it's the reality that, you know, retailers have been facing disruption for quite a few years now, um, but the pace of it has accelerated, right? Within a three month period, you know, we saw staggering spikes in e-commerce, rapid shifts in behaviors out of necessity or, or safety. Um, and that may lead to a long tail of, uh, you know, long-term changes that will impact the way businesses operate and, and speak to consumers. So I'd love your take on, you know, what trends will maybe come out on top, you know, last past this accelerated period. And, um, you know, if you have any final closing words of advice or wisdom for the folks that are trying to wrap their heads around all of this acceleration yeah. and, and determine the right way to innovate moving forward. I, I spend a lot of time talking to CEOs and, and exec leadership teams about the, 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 the fact that COVID is an accelerant. I mean, um, <clears throat> whatever trends were sort of in existence prior to, um, they still in existence. It's just, we're just years ahead of uh, where, we, where we used to be. And, and we, will, we will keep on staying on an accelerated rate, even as we're working virtually. I mean, I, I was, was talking to one, one leadership group and I said, you know, if, if somebody, one among you are, are kind of having an, uh, an idea that you, you want to explore, the way to probably play out is you're, you shoot an email to a couple of people, you try to figure out a time to get together and, and, and talk about it. But that could take some time. That could take a week. It might take two weeks. Yeah, let's, let's put this on the calendar in two weeks. Now what would happen? Well, I mean, you could probably meet later today or tomorrow uh, on Zoom. And, and so that cadence has shot way up. This is the iteration rate on discussions, uh, creating ideas, being able to move something forward is, is happening at a much, much higher rate. So, uh, so that's my first point. Um, uh, the second has to do with um, this idea, uh, and I am going to talk a bit about that uh, during my talk. But, but that, um, but much, much of this acceleration sits up here. Like we like to think of acceleration that that it is, um, it's, it's just the tech is driving it. For instance, uh, and of course, tech does drive acceleration, right? for sure. But really, it's in it's in the in the space of the it's in the our mindset and the mind space that acceleration happens. How quickly do, does a consumer um, accept the new norm of doing things? It's really it's really up here where that happens. How quickly can you, uh, within your group or or, or your company, uh, align to try something different? That's that's all up here. That has really nothing to do with the tech. Nothing to do with any of those things. It's, 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 it has to do with these other pieces. And so the better you're able to uh, be um, sort of expansive about what the possibilities are that you're facing, and the better able you are to align around it, uh, the more successful you'll be. So what I was going to say is another trend has to do with leadership's key charge will increasingly be to set vision, set general direction, and get, make sure that as many people as possible are aligned to what this direction is because then the organization can move, they can act. Um, in the past, it might've been trying to solve for, well, what are the specifics around this, this or that? But now it's, what is this? What is the vision? Which direction we're going in? Make sure everybody's on board with that. And then unleash 
unleash the power of everybody else to sort of act according to this. I think, I think we're gonna see that shoot up. I'm, I'm telling leaders more and more that the vision piece is gonna be becoming increasingly important because the details will just pivot, change. You're not gonna know all those details. Uh, so those are some of the big trends that I'm seeing that most people don't think about or talk about. Yeah, some great stuff there. I love that whole notion of it kind of starts with your mindset and your ability to kind of think beyond the boundaries of your own status quo or the status quo of the company. So Franz, some great closing points there. Again, really appreciate you taking the time out and thank you again so much for keynoting RIC this year. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. It's going to be awesome. And uh, of course, everyone out there, thanks so much for watching. Reminder, RIC is coming soon, October 13th and 14th, online only. Um, you'll be able to get insights, more insights from Franz and 50 plus other speakers from thought leaders, analysts to retail executives such as yourself. Just go to retailinnovationconference.com for more information and to register. Thanks again, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time.